So in a previous video, I showed the process of how to install Apture ZTP within your EvenG environment. In this video, I'll be showing how you can leverage the Apture ZTP server to automate the onboarding process of discovering devices and adding them as device agents within the Apture server itself. I'll start off by connecting this Apture ZTP server to my lab network. Now that I have it connected to my lab network, I'll just go ahead and power on this Apture ZTP device. I can see currently it's in the process of booting up. Once it finishes loading, I'll log in with the default credentials of admin and the default password of admin as well. And here by default, after ZTP is set to get an IP address via DHCP. And I can see it currently has received the IP address of 192.168.0.43. However, because I'll be utilizing this as a uh, ZTP server and a TFTP server for devices to pull files and configurations from this server, I wanna make this a static IP address so that that IP address never changes. If I take a look at the actual network configuration file of how this is performing, I'll do sudo nano slash etsy slash netplan slash zero one net cfg.eml and i can see this is currently what we have in place dhcp4 is set to yes so i want to copy and paste a static configuration that's going to update this with the the correct syntax for what we'll need in order to set a static ip address so i'll putty to the ip address dot 43 and I'll hit enter again here I'll log in with the default username and password of admin admin and boom all right so this is the file that I want to change and you could do a, a google search uh, for Juniper documentation for Apture and you can find the syntax that you can then copy to a notepad and then via putty paste that into your uh, Apture ZTP server. So in my case, I've already pasted this, but I've also added in the syntax that would allow me to uh, configure a default gateway. So I'm gonna change that IP address to dot 21 since that's what I want it to be set to. And I'll just point the DNS server to Google for this instance. If I come back over here, uh, the putty session, I want to just erase what's currently here and then I'll paste in that syntax that I copied. So I'll do a control O to save this file and I'll exit and I'll do a sudo netplan apply. So that should take effect and this putty session will no longer be valid. I should be able to see, yep, now my IP address is set to 192.168.0.21. And if I look at the route, IP route, I can see I have a default route that should allow it, should allow me to connect to it via my browser. So what I'll do up here at the top is I'll type in HTTPS colon whack whack 192.168.0.21. I get redirected, I'll click advanced and proceed to this IP address. I'll log in with the default username and password of admin admin. And immediately it's uh, prompting me to change the password. So I'll type in the old password of admin. I'll just go ahead and set a new one for this uh, example. And I'll go ahead and click change. Immediately after I enter in the new password, it, it kicks me out and it wants me to log in utilizing those credentials. Admin and the new password that you just set. And here we go. It's gonna take you through this wizard of automatically setting up this device to function you know, as the ZTP server that you need it to be. In this case, we need to point it to the Apture server that's in our environment. In my case, the Apture server has the .20 uh, address, and then it also wants us to configure the username and password to log in. So for this, within the Apture instance itself, the .20 device, I need to configure a user that is specifically for the ZTP process. So I'll come over here to platform and select the users and I'll create a user called ZTP and I'll specify what that password is gonna be and I'll do that here as well. And I need to select the role to be device ZTP and I'll click create. So now I have that new user 
with the role of device CTP. And now over here, I can go ahead and vin vin to the Apture server this and put in the IP address as well as the user and the password that I've just put in place over on the Apture server. So I'll go ahead and submit and proceed to the next step. Vin the next step is really important. This is vin what allows you to actually specify you know what subnet you're on so that this server knows uh, what range to give out IP addresses and so forth but then down here is where it gets more specific so I find the class juniper that I'm using in this case and it's saying okay Vin Vin you detect that the device reaching out has a vendor ID that says Juniper in the first seven characters, then give them this bootstrap configuration. And this bootstrap configuration is really what's going to do this whole ZTP process of automating the process of onboarding this device within Aptra. So the first thing that I'm gonna to wanna to do is say define my subnet. And in my case, I'll be going with 192.168.0.0. And the net mask will be 255.255. .255. 5.255.0. The IP address that I have for this TFTP server is dot 21. So I'll go ahead and update that there, make that dot zero. And the range is going to be from dot 41 all the way to 49. Uh, I'll make the default gateway dot, let's see, 100. And then for the third step, we can specify what we want the DNS server to be. In this case, I'm just going to go with Google 8.8.8. .8 .8. And then the back of it being 8.8.4.4. One important step, and this <laughs> this messed me up when I did this one time before, is I need to, for the subnet portion, backspace out these hashtags. Because currently, you know, if there's a hashtag in front of it, it's not going to apply it. It's going to ignore that and just read it as a comment. So with that being done, so far, that looks good. There's only one other change that I need to do. First, in my EVNG environment, I know that the virtual devices that I'm working with here are going to be set for a specific code version. So I'll check within Aptra what that code version is, 23.2R1.14. And I wanna come back over to the Aptra ZTP server and then from the configurator, I'll navigate to Junos uh, for the versions, specify our version to be 23.2R1. 23.2R1.14. And I'll click add. And so when I come back over to the code editor for the ZTP process and I scroll down to Junos, I can see that, all right, the device's onboarding uh, must be utilizing this version. It's going to automatically install a device root password of root one, two, three. However, I could change that to whatever I want it to from the configurator. And it's going to install an off box agent within Aptra. So I'll go ahead and click save and proceed. And that is literally all you need to do for setting up this ZTP server. But since I'm working with virtual appliances, there's one mandatory config statement or uh, that needs to be in place on these devices in order for this uh, ZTP process to be smooth sailing. So in order to do that, I will bring up a putty session to the ZTP server once more. I'll click accept. And that's by changing the directory to slash containers data. And over on the TFTP server, if I do a ls-l, I can see that there goes that Junos bootstrap sh config. So I'll do a nano and I'll paste in that name and sweet. So this is the full on script. You can uh, take a look at this in your environment to see a full breakdown of uh, all the commands that this entails. But what I'll do, and I won't go too far, is I'll just copy this line right here, for instance, and I'll go ahead and paste it in. And I'll I'll edit this to say set system commit synchronize. Hopefully I spelled that that right. But I'll do a control O to save and I'll exit. Now we are good to go. Whenever you make a change to the DHCP file or server, you want to restart the service by doing a restart or a Docker restart and then specifying what that service was. In this case, for me, that would be DHCPD. Now that that's in place, what I can do is I can come back over to my EVNG topology. I'll go ahead and start this first device, VX3. 
And from this devices tab within the AppSure ZTP server, I should see this device begin to populate once it comes online and it requests an IP address via DHCP. All right, currently still waiting on that device to load. All right, so it looks like I made a typo here when I was doing this DHCP comp file and I forgot to do the dot eight at the end of this. So I do 192.168 and I'll make sure that that's like that for all of these. There we go. And that looks good. I now need to hop back over on the putty session and restart the DHCP server. So I'll do restart DHCPD. Now we can see that it's successfully beginning to discover that device it's stating which process it's at. And shortly it should transition to a completed state. And sweet. So that one just completed the ZTP process. I'll go ahead and start up another device in, uh, in the background here. So boom, we can see that next message already came in from the next device. So that's transitioned to a minute ago. So now I'll go ahead and start up the next device and I'll come back and monitor that request come through and boom, there goes device number three. All right, so now that's transitioned to a minute ago. So I'll start the fourth VX device. All right, and I'll go ahead and start the last device here. All right, so I'll just go ahead and wait for the rest of these to finish doing this onboarding process and we'll see what it looks like when it's done. So. After about eight minutes, all devices were able to be automatically discovered and onboarded into our AppSure environment. Now, in reality, you know, you can do these devices simultaneously uh, when you're working with physical hardware, but because I am bound the, by the restraints of a virtual environment, it took a, it took a little bit longer. Um, but now if I hop back over to the AppSure controller at that dot 20 address, and I come over here to the device devices tab and you'll notice that under services you know it sees all of these different services because it's in communication with the ZTP server that we set up but if I come back and then I go to devices you can see that we can see the same output that we were able to monitor from our uh, Apture ZTP server and if you click show log it even even shows you the details of the events that this device went through in order to reach a successful state. Um, but the really fun part is if I come over here to manage devices, you know, boom. Here I have five devices that are ready to be added, acknowledged within Aptra, and then they could be used within whatever blueprint that I, I wanted to set up to begin you know, managing these devices. So that's how you automate the onboarding process, leveraging the Aptra ZTP server. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, go ahead and smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel to stay tuned for future videos. As always, thanks for viewing and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.